Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Who said bipartisanship is dead in Harrisburg? That was beautiful. Uh, first, let me thank the select committee for their participation and interest in a topic which has resonated in these halls for several decades. I'd like to think longer than I have been alive have we been discussing property taxes in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is not an easy topic you're looking in to address, so I appreciate your interest and time in that. I'd like to discuss House Bill 2230, which is my plan for comprehensive local tax div diversification with the goal of moving all local governments away from re their reliance on property taxes. House Bill 2230 has two main parts. The first part will institute a referendum in every county other than Philadelphia asking voters to implement a 1% county sales tax with the proceeds going to reduce school district millage rates within that county. The 1% supplemental sales tax will be administered in a similar way to the current county sales taxes in Allegheny and Philadelphia counties. It will not be imposed without the voters' approval. The second part will allow every local government within the Commonwealth to levy an income tax, either an earned income tax or personal income tax, in order to reduce its millage rates. The minimum reduction is 30%, with a maximum of complete elimination or 100%. For counties and municipalities using this option, the millage rates will be frozen at the reduced level. The end goal is for income tax to take a larger burden of the local government's revenue. House Bill 2230 is passed out of the House Finance Committee is on second consideration before the entire House. I also have an addendum for your review, local tax options from across the, the country. Um, it's a report from the National Conference of State Legislators from 2006. I found it very interesting and uh, have that for, for the committee. It, it's over there for your review. Uh, there are two benefits to diversifying local tax local government tax revenue sources through the sales tax and income tax. First, both of these taxes increase with inflation, while the property tax does not. This requires ever-increasing millage rate increases just to continue to bring in the same amount of revenue. Second, and most importantly, both the sales tax and income tax are based on the taxpayer's ability to pay. The property tax is enough. Property tax is based on an individual's perceived wealth. So why do I advocate for local option as a path to property tax reform rather than pursuing a new state level funding stream? My first reason is philosophical and the second and third are pragmatic. First, the property tax is a local tax. As far as I know, we have not had a state property tax since the time of William Penn. It was instituted for a very short time and after its first institution, complaints started flowing in. Um, like crazy, so they ended up repealing it. As a believer in small government, I think that local problem should be addressed with a local solution. House Bill 2230 is designed to give each local government the weapons it needs to fight the problems related to property tax while still providing funding they need. Second, there is a pl political problem with any statewide solution. I've also attached a an analysis of school district property tax collections by county. Uh, within my testimony. Here's a startling fact. 88% of school district property taxes collected in the Commonwealth are collected in 25 counties out of 67. In case you missed that statement, let me repeat it. 25 counties make up 88% of the total collection of school property taxes in this state, which means if you would raise state taxes to eliminate property taxes, 42 counties will be sending their tax dollars to 25 counties. Statewide plans always have and always will fail in the question of distribution. Each representative in the General Assembly is tasked with representing his or her own area. Why would a legislator vote for a statewide solution that would result in less funding for their home area? Why should they? Everyone is in favor of a fair formula, but what is fair? Is reducing everyone's property taxes by the same percentage fair? Or is it, or is it by reducing everyone's property taxes by the same amount? A 50% across the board reduction in property taxes means that one community gets $500 each while another gets $5,000 each. A $1,000 across the board reduction results in a 40% reduction for one community but only 5% in another. Total elimination might reduce one person's property taxes by $14,000 per year and another's by $1,000. They both pay zero property taxes but is it really fair? If you ask 102 members, would you get 102 answers? That is the reality we have to face and deal with as we move forward. As a final pragmatic point, by eliminating local property taxes and replacing it with a state level funding stream, we would be completely taking over the funding of local schools. School boards would still be left with spending decisions, but for how long? We have all heard the golden rule of government. He who has the gold makes the rules. 
How long do you think it would take before the future General Assembly takes over all the duties of the school boards? I, for one, do not want to be doing um, pupil issues in my district office when a student behaves badly and me having to go to the school superintendent and finding out why is student XYZ getting in trouble and why hasn't he um, gotten in school suspension and so forth. Those are the kind of issues you will be getting in your district offices. The state is providing the funding. Why wouldn't they take a greater hand in how it's spent? Statewide teachers contracts? Statewide lesson plans? I know that I would hate to see local decisions made by the Department of Education in Harrisburg. It's a risk inherent in eliminating the role of school boards in the funding of education. These three points, the need for a local solution to a local problem, the, problem, the political problems of constructing a statewide distribution formula, and the goal of preserving local control over educational decisions that led me to construct House Bill 2230 the way that I did. But I understand that this is a deliberative process. We need something that can get 102 votes in the House, 26 votes in the Senate, and the Governor's approval. Other plans before this committee have merit. I see promise in Representative Maloney's House Bill 2300, the constitutional amendment to increase the maximum homestead uh, assessment to 100%. Representative Hethley has introduced a bill for that enabling legislation. This option would help get relief to the homeowners who are really the ones screaming for property tax reform. I'll close my testimony with a chilling thought. Any comprehensive property tax reform must include reassessment reform. We simply cannot continue to have some counties go generations between reassessments. This is a necessity. Even under the most audacious elimination proposals, leave county and municipality taxes in effect. I thank the committee for their time and would be more than happy to answer any questions that you would have.